What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, kind of a weird week, right? We have a half day tomorrow, so uh, this show won't uh, be airing. I think we the market closes about like 1 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, we are off uh, for the 4th of July, and then we'll be back Friday uh, for a full day. Let's see what's kind of going on right now. Uh, in the E-mini, we're up about 0.41%. You know, I mean, this is just going to be expected to not have a lot go on. Now, there's like lighter volume, so you do you know, run the potential of some, some quick moves to the upside or, or whatever some of the makers want to do. But as it stands, you know, we just kind of moving a little bit sideways. Still up 0.41%, which is decent. Uh, Russell Futures up about 0.21%. NQs up uh, about 0.87%. I believe the comp is up about 0.7%. Uh, currently, those Dow Futures up about a quarter of a percent. And same with the Dow Jones itself. And then those gold contract is completely sideways, a little bit to the downside, 0.06%. So you get 2,337 and 60 cents. And silver is trading at 29.79. And then copper still right at that area. I have faith in that contract. Some point. Crude trading at 82.92. We're definitely moving up into that. Uh, trading range there. You know, I spoke with Teddy Kekstad, I believe, sometime last week. I believe it was Monday. Um, and we should have that segment up on our YouTube channel. Strongly recommend checking that out. Uh, give us a like and subscribe while you're there. But that way you can kind of, you know, I mean, if you want to go back and listen to something, it's a good way to do it. All right. Let's look at that dollar trading at 105.71. Uh, still coming off a little bit from that 106 area, but that's okay. We are still up in the higher trading range. And as, you know, Europe, is on track to kind of decrease interest rates. I mean, the dollar is only going to get stronger. Uh, we did have some uh, some positive news regarding inflation from Powell earlier. Uh, what else are we looking at right here? Oh, yeah. We can do this segment, which is how quickly can Disney vaporize Jacob's portfolio until he's forced to hold it. So we're trading at 97.33 right now. Let's take a look at what they got going on. I mean, here's the big news. And, and this is not news. We've spoken about this before multiple times, but it's the streaming platform. It's burned up $11 billion in operating losses since 2019. It's not forecasted to make a profit until the end of this year. Okay, the experiences generated $2.3 billion of operating income. Okay, that's decent. And so it looks like they're going to start focusing a little bit more on that. Of course, in, uh, I believe Universal Studios out in Orlando has, um, you know, I mean, they, they've, they've expanded pretty quickly. So I think Disney is focusing on that. They had spent a bunch of money. Let me see here real quick. I get the number for it. Yeah, so they're, okay, so check, check this out. This is announced back in September 2023, but still this is, you know, rolling in. They would invest $60 billion in its experience division over the next decade. It's widely reported that this would all be directed at theme parks, but a close reading of the filings reveals the parks will only get half the total, with the difference spent on Disney's cruise line, as well as maintenance and technology upgrades. That's interesting. And, you know, there's this common thought as well that, like, uh, you know, it tends to be the boomers who like cruise lines, but I think that is changing, at least for certain demographics in, uh, maybe not so much in Gen X, but millennials as well. Uh, nevertheless, $30 billion investment in its theme park. It's still around 60 times the sum spent on uh, the Paris, Disneyland. Anyways, they're spending a bunch of money. It's about to be 750 acres uh, that they're expanding out in Orlando, and that'll be through the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, it's pretty nuts. And I think that's the way to focus on it. I still don't necessarily get the logic in dumping so much money in their own streaming platform. I mean, I would just... I'm sure there's some commentary on it out there, but the, the way that I see it is they're not a streaming company. They're definitely, you know, I mean, they're huge in movies and, and entertainment. I get that. But at some certain point, I, I feel like licensing might be better. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a unique product, too. So say you want to license out to, like, Hulu or, or Netflix or whatever, you know, I mean, you can charge those companies more money for it. I don't know. If it is profitable, you know, I'll eat my words. And if, it, if it's super profitable, then, then definitely. But uh, as it stands now... I mean, we're trading at 97.29. We go back, what, like three years? Yeah. Let's see if we go back further. I mean, you know, we're trading up like 182. I mean, we've just, you know, completely gone out on this stock. I, I don't know. 
I don't think it has much more to go down. You know, we can test this like February level and, you know, reject that. I mean, I don't think we're going to reject it with heavy volume if we do. I think we'll probably just consolidate around this level. And we might get some, you know, a regular kind of movement up to the upside like that. But uh, still, you know, with, with them just in the meantime investing into the experiences that won't be realized until, let's say, five years, a decade down the line, and then Disney Plus still burning capital, yeah, I don't know. I just, I obviously have a personal problem with that stock just because it makes them a, it's not a significant portion, but a decent portion of, of my personal portfolio, and it's just like, I, I don't know what to do with the thing. Let's take a look. We have some numbers coming out from the cars. Obviously, Tesla is huge in the market. This, this stock doesn't quit, and I, you know, Shorting it just always messes you over, you know? Tesla trading up 8.78%. So they actually did have better Q2 deliveries than anticipated. Um, I would argue probably some of that is due uh, to China and that economy kind of rebounding a little bit. So total deliveries in Q2 were 440, I'll just say round it, 444,000 vehicles. And uh, Q2 production was 410 1,831 there. Uh, analysts expected Tesla deliveries to hit 439,000, so they beat that pretty strongly. Uh, the total number of deliveries in the second quarter fell 4.8% uh, from a year earlier, but rose 14.8% from the first quarter. Deliveries are the closest approximation of sales disclosed by electric vehicle maker. Tesla's current lineup includes Model Y. We know all of this. Yeah, that's blown up. Uh, GM as well. Let's see here. Up just minorly right now, 0.51%, but their sales surge, which is pretty solid for them, uh, reported on Tuesday. The U.S. Uh, auto sales saw a slight rebound in the second quarter, but the car makers' EV sales rocketed. It's a poss possible sign that the anticipated ramp in production of newer electric vehicles is finally here. Sales estimate for, for Q2 for General Motors was 697,804, and they delivered 696,000, so that's a little bit below. But the fact that the EV market is gaining some traction for them is awesome because they've dumped a bunch of money in it. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back.